I don't typically do rechargeable battery mods, at least in consoles that didn't already come with rechargeable batteries. Um, but I did do this one quite a while back. There's a 2000 milliamp hour hobby battery in here. Yeah, I pretty much had to carve out the entire internal battery cavity of this console just to get this to fit. And I did end up putting in a battery connector. So I can unplug this and you know just plug it in micro USB to charge. Uh, you can tell that's how long ago I did this because it's micro USB, not USB type C, but that's besides the point. Um, anyway, of course this console does work perfectly fine. Um, but again, I'm, I'm, I'm not a big fan of them, uh, mostly because I don't, I don't really like to advocate for rechargeable battery mods. I don't like saying, hey, you know, I did it, so it's probably okay to do. Uh, mostly for the reason that when done properly, they work perfectly fine and they're perfectly safe. When they're not done properly, of course, that is not true. They're not perfectly safe. And, you know, I'm not saying that a lot of people are doing it wrong. I'm just saying that enough people are doing it wrong that it kind of spooks me. Um, anyway, that's besides the point. We're not doing a lithium ion rechargeable battery mod because this one's already done. We're going to do something a little bit different. So I've got this Game Boy Advance here. It's perfectly stock aside from the AGS-101 screen. It's got some mostly dead nickel metal hydride batteries in it, but otherwise beyond the AGS-101 screen, perfectly unmodified and you can tell they're almost dead because it's red um, anyway I found these online and they just come in a panel and you can snap them apart we just want one of them for now but what these are these are um, battery charge modules for nickel metal hydride batteries basically they're the TP4056 but instead of for lithium ion batteries they're for what we got in this thing so I'm going to go ahead and see if I can't get that installed in this and uh, yeah, see if we can't get that working that way. Now I know Ben Ben was working on a mod, basically this thing. Um, I feel like he's been working on it for over a year and I don't think it's out yet still. So when that comes out, maybe that's a good option if that comes out. Until then though, we got these. This is, uh, shoot, let me what this is so this chip here this is the brains behind the whole thing this is a charlie november 3085 search that up you'll probably find a bunch of these things they weren't exactly cheap not quite like the tp4056 modules but they're really not that expensive either just not as cheap but let's see if we can get that installed now the theory behind that is um, if we get this installed, we can still use the console pretty much like normal, except that it's going to have a USB port, and we can uh, pretty much charge it with the same convenience that a lithium-ion battery will be able to charge with. The uh, concern, though, is there's no real easy way to prevent charging alkaline batteries. So if you have alkaline batteries in this thing and you plug it in, it's going to try and charge those. Now, thankfully, alkaline batteries don't usually explode, but just because they don't usually do something doesn't mean they never do something. So that's one of my concerns, but I think I'll be fine. Just keep that in mind if you're planning this mod for yourself. So the idea is to get a USB port right here in this empty space. And uh, of course I want to use USB type C. So I got one of these guys here. Now all this is, this is pretty much just a breakaway or a breakout board for my choice of USB port. They make them in uh, micro USB if that's what you want. Um, I couldn't find any in I couldn't find any that I liked for USB Type-C, so I started making my own. I guess I'll make a GitHub repo and upload them. Um, they do make them, of course, for USB Type-C, but like they're all these bigger kinds with all the pins, and you, know, you, don't, 
you don't necessarily want that for something like this. And these USB-C ports themselves are quite unreliable. Um, you can get them in this even bigger kind too, and these USB-C ports are much better, but this is obviously quite a bit larger, so we don't want that either. Anyway, this thing I'm thinking should fit, it actually it does fit right there perfectly, uh, but we'll need to cut a hole for it. Uh, I'm gonna put it on this side rather than this side, only because I'm not gonna keep taking this thing apart, and I don't wanna accidentally nick that ribbon cable. I don't mind folding that up while I'm working here, but I'm thinking that should fit nicely right there. So let me mark this off so that I can start file, uh, yeah, filing it out later. And I'll probably end up doing most of this off camera just because I have a feeling it's going to take me a while. And I'm just marking out the port area. And uh, hopefully I don't ruin this thing too much. All right, now let's find a good place to, to put this thing. I'm sure it'll fit nicely right here if I wanted to do that. That capacitor might be a little bit too tall, but... Wow, that's actually almost too easy. I feel robbed. <laughs> okay, another choice, we could always pop it in there, and it'll fit there. There's plenty of room. I'll have to secure it somehow, so it's not rattling around, shorting on things. Otherwise, will it fit on this side? I don't know that it does, unless we put it this way. I'm thinking we'll just leave it right here. That seems awful convenient. Oh, but if we put it right here, we won't be able to see the LED for when it's charging. And that is a genuine concern. Okay, so yeah, we'll uh, we'll put it right here. It's gotta go up above that wheel, huh? All right, it would make this a lot easier if this PCB were smaller. So I'm just going to cut it. I don't recommend just cutting PCBs. That's rarely a good idea. That also is way beyond the specs of these flush cutters. But I'm a rebel. Okay. That should fit significantly easier. And what do you know? It does. So I'll just get some double-sided tape, stick it right onto the amp, and then we'll start soldering it. Let me just double check that I didn't completely screw this thing up. Of course, I haven't tested one of these before. I definitely should have beforehand. But the grounds on both sides are connected. Yep. And then I believe this connects up to here as well. Yeah, and that's still connected. That's still connected. And that's still connected. So yeah, that's fine. I could have cut even more off if I wanted to and then just soldered on this side straight to the capacitor. And then on this side, I'd have to attach this capacitor to this resistor right here. And that would let me cut off even more, but I think it's gonna be fine. My concern is uh, looking at this big old solder pad on the bottom, this looks like a heat sink. So this thing might get pretty toasty. 
Hopefully it's fine there, but uh, we'll see, I guess. All right. So to install it, I'm gonna use some of this nice sticky tape. Cut off a big chunk here. We're really only using the part on top of the amp, but that's okay. I just want it want to make sure it clears the uh, volume wheel. Right. And because I don't have labels anymore, all right, that's the charge input side. That's the battery side. Eh, screw it. I don't care which side's which. I want the light on this side. And that still clears everything perfectly with plenty of room. Nice. Okay. So, be in ground. So, I need to run a wire over to the positive side of the battery, which I'm thinking I'm actually going to run to the uh, power switch here to make sure that it's fused. I don't know, that seems a little bit safer. And uh, let's see. Since, the bo since both grounds are connected, I only have to connect one ground on this module. And I could just run it straight into the console here. And I could probably use the ground on this capacitor, which should be this one right here. Indeed it is. And then we'll just need to run that over and down there. That'll be easy. Easy peasy. Not gonna work. All right. So for wiring this thing, I'm going to use this 26 gauge solid core stuff that I have. I normally use 30 gauge, but I'm using 26 gauge that way this gives me a wee bit of wiggle room. And we'll run that up. Should we run it under the cart slot? That'll be cleaner. I don't think it'll fit. Very nicely. Eh, we'll just run it under the cart slot. Yeah, so that goes there. And let's just double check. This last pin all the way over to the left should connect to the fuse. Indeed it does, which connects to that. So that's what we want. Whoa. That didn't do what I wanted, but 
Got there eventually. Okay. I am just trying to get this on that last pin there. I'm going to use tweezers because that's probably going to make my life easier. crusty, but I'll live with it. I'm going to run it under that wire just so I can get all the way in the corner. Realistically, I should use better tape because this thing moves around quite a bit. But oh well. in there. All right, let's do the negative. I already checked this, but I'm checking it again. This top on the capacitor, is that a ground? Yes. Can't see my meter, but I can. That's all that matters, I guess. I probably shouldn't be using this ground. You know what? Nah. Let's use this ground up on the switch. That'll be easier. I'm going to go straight there. Just for just to show you guys, I'm not skipping steps here. This last leg is a ground, which is also connected up to the negative terminal. Huh. Helps if you can see the meter, huh? Whoops. That is a ground connected up to the negative terminal. Oh, and I accidentally cut this too long, which is going to make this a little bit harder to route, but it's okay.
That should clear everything. Oh, and it barely does. I should turn this the other way. There we go. Nice. Still not perfect, but good enough. All right, so now uh, I'm going to take a wee bit of a break. How I'm going to get this cut out, I'm going to drill some small pilot holes being super careful not to drill into my AGS-101 LCD. And then I'm just going to sit here with a file and uh, keep going until I get the opening the right size. I'll be back in, I don't know, for you it'll be a few seconds. Yeah, yeah, I ended up removing it. I decided I didn't want to risk my screen here. It's not exactly cheap to replace. Um, but. Most importantly, I just couldn't get enough stroke on the file with it in there. I had to remove it if I wanted to get anything done tonight. But uh, anyway, there we go. There we have it. I think that is going to be perfect. I hope that's going to be perfect. God, I hope it works. <laughs> uh, okay, so let's pop that out of there. It's a very tight fit. So my process was uh, I just drilled two small holes near the corners, not at the corners, but near the corners uh, with the smallest drill bit I had in my uh, Dremel slash drill press thing. Uh, and then I chucked a much bigger drill bit that was about, that was actually the same diameter as this file, in my hand drill and then drilled that manually by hand. Oh, I shouldn't have done that. I just had this thing cleaned. Um, and then I just sat here with the file until, until I got it to it. A lot of guess and check there. I'm going to use masking tape to make sure my lens is dust free and my screen is also dust free. I'm going to leave that on until I've got everything installed. If you're following along at home, which I don't recommend because you know, it's a battery mod. I never recommend doing battery mods. Um, definitely take your Game Boy apart if you can. Of course, if you're doing an IPS modded Game Boy, chances are pretty good your screen is glued in. Or, you know, with that double-sided adhesive. Don't try and take that adhesive out. It's not going to come out. You're going to need a new screen if you try that. Okay, that went together suspiciously easy. Now my concern with a charger like this, and I forgot to mention this earlier, is that just having it leaving it perpetually connected is going to cause some issues with um, uh, parasitic drain. I'm really hoping that doesn't happen. Oh, no way. Yes, that's beautiful. It just barely clears the screen. Okay, cool. So we're gonna need some insulation here. Otherwise, this is going to short right on the back of that. Let's get... a little bit of Captain. It's not the end. That is the end. work. Also work. Okay. 
Now I might have to cut something out of the battery tray as well to get this to fit. But it should still fit nicely. Ooh, I did just spot something that I have to trim. There's this little, I don't know what to call it, this little uh, tab sticking out right here. When you get these little PCBs from Osh Park, they have these tabs on them because that's how they make them. Most manufacturers cut the tabs off. Osh Park does not. They let you do that. But it'll just file off nice and easy. And yeah, I'm almost definitely going to have to cut something out of the battery tray to get that to fit. Yeah. I figured as much. But... This being a clear shell, I can do exactly that. Just trace. All right, bear with me just a moment. I'm gonna. I'm just gonna use the Dremel for that. It's gonna make my life so much easier. Here be. Right, that went um, surprisingly smoothly. I didn't completely destroy it, everything. Uh, all I did was cut a hole here with the uh, Dremel and then I filed it to size. And when I was finally done, I hit it with the lighter to clean up all the white edges, but it fits nicely. All right, so before we put it together, I still gotta actually wire it up. And uh, well, that should be the easy part. Cause I'm gonna do I don't know how I'm going to do it. I should run that under. Yeah, that's what I'll do. All right. So it'll go under, over, until it hits that. I think that's probably enough wire. I should turn on the soldering iron too. That might help, huh? And I'm not going to glue this in or anything. I think the uh, shell should hold it in with the cutout that I made. Hell, that actually fits underneath. I'm going to put it over, though. I think it's probably a better idea. Now this adapter that I made, I did already test it, and uh, there should be no issues. Okay, it's not the best solder joint, but it'll do. Reroute this thing. I'm actually going to get a little bit more slack and I'm just going to solder it straight to that capacitor instead. I think that'll be quite a bit easier. Oh, I should zoom in, huh? Might help.
Even after that, you still can't see squat, can you? That's okay. I think you get the idea. And then I have to solder a ground somewhere. Quite frankly, it's probably easy enough to just run it back over here. I'm just weighing my options here. Yeah, I think that's what I'll do. Same thing. And yes, I know the footprint itself is backwards. I think it's backwards. Shouldn't the square pad be the ground? I don't know. Whatever, it's labeled properly. It's all that matters. That should be it. Doesn't interfere at all with the volume. Let's run a quick continuity check. That should be grounded. Indeed it is. That goes to that, which goes to that. This should go here. And that should go Eh, looks good enough to me. All right. Let's try it out, huh? Hopefully nothing blows up. Now, much like the uh, lithium-ion battery mods with these uh, TP4056 modules, this little module that I'm using does not support load switching which means you probably can charge and play simultaneously, but you should not. Oh, I should probably put some, uh, yeah, hang on, hang on, one more step. Doesn't have to be perfect, because it's just going to cover it. There we go. I don't remember where I found these modules. I think uh, 
think Esoteric Sean had mentioned these. I don't know where he found them. Maybe he just stumbled across them one day. Either way, if they work, I mean, it seems pretty nice. Alright. 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 <gasps> That's the wrong screw. Or bit hole, whatever you want to call it. Alright, so this should go in there. Just hoping nothing blows up. I don't think anything's blowing up. Lights for dramatic effect. All of them. There we go. <laughs> so it still works, and somehow my batteries are more charged than they were. There we go. Because <laughs> that's normal. Okay. But the fact that it still works is to be expected, I hope. But that's not what we care about, I think. Well, I mean, I guess it is, but... Here goes nothing. Ah, it's charging. So let me uh, let me unplug that. Let's take a look here, see what's going on. So this, hopefully, I can wedge in there. This, as you can see, both my batteries combined are at two point four eight volts. And as you can see, it is indeed charging. Slowly, but it's getting there. So I guess I'll uh, I'll leave this for a while, let it do its thing, see what happens, and uh, I'll report back when I can. Out of curiosity, if we disconnect one of these batteries, which should disconnect the circuit, it stops charging. Nice. All right, so I'll be back in a wee bit. Let's see what happens. All right, so finished charging a few minutes ago. Um, I was, you know, just giving it the old feel here to see, and I could feel the plastic getting pretty warm. Obviously, it wasn't too hot to the touch, and uh, it doesn't look like it caused any defects in the plastic, but it was getting pretty warm batteries themselves were actually getting pretty warm too, so eh, this charger might be a little bit overkill. Um, but as we can see, my battery, uh, it charged up to 3 volts and then it dropped off. These are not very good batteries, but since it's, you know, since it hit that max charge level, um, it shut off the charger, which is actually pretty nice. It's good to know it's not just going to keep charging, and if I plug it back in, it's going to start charging again because these aren't 3 volts. But you can see how quickly that jumped up from 2.86 or whatever it was. And that'll just keep going until it hits 3 again, then it'll shut off. But anyway, we're going to unplug that. Pull that out of there so I can put that back on. And as you can see, everything still works perfectly. And I uh, still got a green light. So I'd say that that was, uh, that was successful. I'd say all went well, and I still have volume working perfectly. You can't even tell if there's a board hovering over the volume wheel, because it's not touching. But uh, yeah, anyway, there we go. I, uh, I'm thinking it might have actually been better to put this thing underneath this, uh, underneath the cart reader. That way I could have had it interface with the uh, shielding here with like a thermal pad or something. And um, I don't know, that might have helped dissipate some heat quite a bit better because in here, there's no air circulation whatsoever. So convection's not, it's just gonna keep getting hotter and hotter until something happens. Um, hopefully until the battery finishes charging, but I mean, that's 
kind of where we're at right now. But then I would have had to relocate the LED. So, hmm, I don't know. I'll keep playing with this. Might be fine. Might not. Uh, but I'm thinking under the shielding would have been better. And then either just forget all about the indicator LED or move it somewhere. But uh, there we go. There's your, uh, there's a nickel metal hydride battery mod. And uh, compared to my lithium ion battery mod, I'd say this is much more functional because I can just pop this out. And uh, ignoring this cutout here, which by the way is not interfering with how the batteries fit. It's lower than the plastic. It's just, I had to cut the plastic. Yeah. Anyway, pop in regular alkaline batteries here and uh, everything still works as normal just don't try and charge these um, but anyway there we go y'all have any questions feel free to hit me up in the comments I'll try and answer what I can but again I really do not recommend doing battery mods unless you know exactly what you're doing if you have any questions do your research first don't just do it and accidentally blow yourself up uh, but on that note, thanks for watching. Have an excellent, excellent evening.